do not buy a house. Do not buy a house right now. It is late 2021. I have been watching this insanity housing market for the last year. In 2020, I thought for sure it couldn't go higher. And then in 2021, in about February, I thought for sure it couldn't go higher. And then we are now at the end of 2021 and I'm thinking for sure it cannot go higher. I did try and purchase my first house right before the 2007, 2008 housing crash. And so I feel like I have lived through this housing frenzy before. I have been to this play before. This is not my first rodeo. What I am seeing right now in my head, and I've been thinking this the whole time, is completely unsustainable. There's articles all over the place that are saying that between August 2020 and August 2021, housing prices soared 20%. 20% in one year, which dwarfed the previous 12 month run of 14%, which was right before the 2008 housing crash. <laughs> Let's talk about buying houses, why I'm telling you not to buy right now, and what we should do. My experience in searching for a rental property has been wildly frustrating, and I've been thinking a lot about what it takes to purchase a house. So let's go over some basic numbers just for fun, and we are gonna use one of my favorite websites, usmortgagecalculator.org. It gives you all of the nitty gritty and things like that. There might be some housing expenses maybe you have not considered, and you definitely need to take into account like the percentage of your housing costs versus your take home income. Because if your housing costs are 50% of your take home income, if you make a middle class wage, you are seriously impeding your progress in retirement, other savings goals, kids, college, vacations, whatever it is that you want to do. Just for fun, let's go to realtor.com and we are going to go to one of my old haunts, McKinney, Texas. And we are going to look for a house. And I am going to do lowest price. And the nice thing about Texas is I do have fairly low cost housing, but there's a little something people maybe don't talk about. Let's, let's do a three bed, two bath. That's a good starter size for a family. And we will hide any pending because I don't wanna mess with that. Okay. Let's look at this cheap one. It's 1,100 square feet. This sucker is small. With a one car garage, it is $270,000. That is more than I paid for my house in Idaho. <laughs> Built in 07, so that's pretty good. Let's scroll through these pictures real quick. It looks like, you know, it's kind of a vanilla house, but as a starter house, that's what we have. Okay, $270,000. And I suspect it would sell for about that. Let's go back over to our mortgage calculator and we're gonna figure out how much that's going to cost us. The down payment is going to be a big deal. How much of a down payment can you swing? Because if you can get 20% down, you will avoid private mortgage insurance, PMI, and that can add a substantial amount to your take home. Now I have a family member that is saving up to buy a house right now, which is like, Ooh, the prices. And I think she said she had a 5% down payment. So let's type in five right here. Dollar wise, it's about $13,500. But you also have closing costs. Closing costs are approximately 4% of the purchase price. And in this case, that would be another $10,000. So you are looking at a $23,000 cash amount you need to bring to closing. And that is only a 5% down payment. That is not very much. Now, interest rate wise, it does depend on your credit score, but they have started sneaking up. But fortunately, they're still hanging out about three and a half percent for a 30 year mortgage. Now, because I am only putting 5% down on here, my PMI is going to cost me something. And that's frustrating, but it is what it is. Our one-time expenses here is gonna be like your closing cost stuff which is totally right. And here's the deal about property taxes in Texas. Property taxes are a lot. They're more than California. They're more than Florida. They're way more than Idaho. They are a lot. Property taxes per year in the Dallas area are actually closer to 2.2% of your purchase price or value of the home. That's $6,000 a year for a house that costs this amount. I know, rethinking Dallas, aren't you? You got your homeowner's insurance, that's usually not a ton, maybe $1,000 a year, and any HOAs if you have it. Okay, scrolling down, that puts our $270,000 very, very small house at a monthly payment of 
just under $2,000. Wow. <laughs> now, $187 of that is the PMI, I know, but the property taxes is $500 a month. Here's my point in going through this exercise is you think you've got your payment and interest payments all set up, but depending on where you live, that property tax rate can skyrocket your payment. Even here where I live, I find the property taxes to be quite low, but I'm still paying like $250 a month. And that is something you definitely need to consider if you're on a tight budget. Let's say your take home income is $4,000 a month. That's your take home income. You cannot sustain a $2,000 a month payment. You are going to have utilities on top of that HOA payments, possibly on top of that. So either we need to put down a much bigger down payment or wait until the housing market calms the bleep down. According to this article by fortune.com, it says that this fall, the housing market has softened a little, and this is highly dependent on where you live. Where I live, it has not. There is not one thing less than $300,000 where I live. Not one thing. And the average income is actually very, very low where I live. I live in a very poor town, a poor state. What is happening is all of the people from California and Washington and Oregon are now working remotely and they can live anywhere and they're all coming in. So they see a very small house for $600,000 and they buy them like this and the people here can't purchase the houses. Here's one of the reasons they are predicting that 2022 will bring lower housing costs. Are you ready? Really high inflation has increased the odds that the Federal Reserve is going to interest rates on home mortgages. Now, right now they are supremely low. When I bought my first house in the mid 2000s, it was a six and a quarter and that was low. That was hugely low at the time. And I feel like it's just kind of steadily gone down ever since then. But because of inflation, the Federal Reserve could very well raise that interest rate back up to six, up to eight, up to 10. Who's to say? I don't know. But at what interest rate are people going to stop buying houses? That is the question. I suspect it's not that high. Right now we're hanging about three and a half to four, depending on a lot of factors. 6%, are people gonna stop buying? Would you buy a house at 6%? I guess that's the question. To be clear, I'm not talking about refinancing in the 2% range. I'm talking about a new purchase with medium credit score. So it's possible that interest rates go up, people stop buying houses, which means the cost of houses will go down, but then that means you are paying a higher interest rate. So it's kind of like this. It was predicted that housing prices were going to fall drastically in 2021 and the opposite happens. As far as forecasting, do we even know what the heck is going on? All I know is that the housing prices right now are complete insanity. And if you don't have a 20% down payment, you're going to be paying extra fees and it's very possible that your monthly housing payment is going to impede your further financial goals. Because I've been looking for rental uh, places and not being able to find anything, it even crossed my mind that we buy a different house and rent out this house. There is a huge need for house rentals for families, for people who come and work at the university as they're searching for a house. Trust me, I was one of those people and I know a lot of those people. And there is literally nothing to rent for a family who is moving here for work. So I looked around. Problem number one is there's nothing for sale. There are 13. I'm not making that number up. There are 13 houses for sale in my area. And that ranges from tiny little shacks up to multi-million dollar land with acreage on a farm. I found one house that I was like, wow, this is really beautiful, this could work. It's not bigger than my house. It's newer than my house, but it's not bigger. The lot's not great. It's like positioned weird on the lot. They're asking $950,000. <gasps> At $950,000, I mean, what kind of down payment could I even do on that? If I'm not selling this house, I couldn't do it right now, but let's just say I put down $100,000. That's only a 10% down payment, which means I have PMI. What is my interest rate? I don't know, 3.6, if I'm lucky, 325, right? They always advertise 3.07, but not very many people get that. I am gonna have to pay PMI. Let's put it on a 30 year, even though I don't wanna be paying a mortgage for 30 years. I don't think there's HOA fees. My homeowner's insurance would be a lot, a lot more than that because it's just like that much bigger or more expensive of a house. Holy mother, my house payment would be $5,000 a month. And that's not even utilities for a house that big. It's not that big. 
it's nice. So maybe the utilities would actually be pretty similar to mine. $5,000. As far as I'm concerned, that's a lot of money. That's way more money than I want to put on a house for 30 years. Let's just take like, there's a house around the corner for sale for 525. It's no bigger than mine. It's like, it's like just like mine. And let's put down the same 100,000. Closing cost is probably $20,000. Oh my gosh, that's so much. Okay, that makes my payment $2,500 a month, which is a whole lot better than the $5,000 a month. Um, that's almost something I could swing, honestly. May oh, but then I need the down payment and closing costs, which I don't have. My point is this. If you can stand it, don't buy a house at the moment unless you have 20% down payment and it's going to work for you for a while. So if you don't have like a solid good down payment, work on saving the down payment. That's going to serve you well. Number two, consider house hacking, like buy a duplex, live in one, rent out the other side. I had a family member actually buy a house and he rents out two bedrooms in the basement for college students. He's like offsetting his expensive mortgage by renting two of the bedrooms downstairs. So you can like house hack it to help your housing costs be a little bit better. So I'm going to finish with a question for you. What do you think housing prices are going to do in the next year? Do you think they're going to go up? Do you think they're going to go down? Are we going to see a crash similar to 2008? I feel like we are. Like I feel in my gut that we are. But listen, I've been wrong before. <laughs> so it's really hard to say. And if you are house hunting right now, let me just say I feel you. It is supremely frustrating. And I hope you have an awesome down payment and happy house hunting to you. Bye-bye.